What's going on everyone and welcome back to another video. So yes, this week we are back inside my room just because I'm done making motorcycle videos for the time being uh, for two reasons. One of which is one, it's super hard to register a bike that's uh, 50 plus years old and two, it's really hard to register a bike that's been out of the DMV system for I don't even know how long. Plus it is running an engine that is non-OEM so it, it does make it a little bit more difficult on top of that. And so with all that combined, I just decided that for now, I'm gonna focus on doing most of these vlogs in the safety of my room and maybe in the near future when I do have a little bit more time and money to actually put it under a custom motorcycle title rather than the original manufacturing title, uh, I'll get to that. So for now, gonna be in the room. So ignoring all that and going back into the main topic for today, I wanted to discuss what is transport nursing. Now, since my last video of the specific specialization of the nurse investigator did so well, I thought that I would break off and start my own sub-series, which is going to be my What Is series, which is going to be covering the different subspecialties of nurses as well as EMS staff. And if some of my viewers do have a question regarding a very specific specialty that I won't cover in the main series, please do comment and I will get to that as soon as possible. So for this week, I'm going to be discussing all about transport nursing. Transport nursing is made up of CCT, which is critical care transport, uh, flight, which is typically in helicopters or in fixed wing planes, and MICN, which is mobile intensive care nursing. And all three of these categories is what is determined to be pre-hospital care, which for some people can be fun and exciting, whereas for others it could be challenging and potentially the scariest place to be. So to start us off, what does pre-hospital really connotate? So in layman's term, pre-hospital is anything that is out of hospital, anything that is out in the field, such as providing immediate resuscitative efforts as a first responder or in the immediate uh, ambulance setting. Because you are out of the hospital, you are in a much, much more dire situation and providing effective patient care and determining what is right treatments can be a little bit more difficult. When looking at it from a career standpoint, you know, nurses are typically known to be working in the hospital, clinic, or home health setting, uh, whereas EMTs and paramedics are known to work in ambulances or flight operations. But transport nursing is where the two kind of converge. As a transport nurse, you can work in an ambulance, a helicopter, or a fixed wing plane, which all sounds pretty cool, right? Well, I think so too, which is why this is what I want to do once I EAS from the US Navy in about five years. However, as I mentioned prior, transport nursing is a very polarizing field, as some people could love it and others can absolutely hate it. One of the biggest reasons for the negative stigma or negative view towards transport nursing is the heightened amount of mental capacity needed to work in the field. And some of you may be thinking, well, you know, you went to college for either your bachelor's or some other level of higher education, so wouldn't you be using your brain capacity in some sense? Well, I'm just speaking from personal experience when I say that some people get into specific specialties just to sit on their ass and delegate tasks to LVNs and CNAs and anyone else. Transport nursing, on the other hand, has no room for error and because of that, no room for that sort of practice. So if you wanna do something along that line, I don't know, go look for work in a nursing home or a convalescent home or a skilled nursing facility because they really can't take that sort of shit in the pre-hospital setting. And I know I'm gonna get shit for that, but in my experience, for every one good, you know, nursing home nurse, there was about three to four bad ones, so take that as you will. Another reason why transport nursing is also very polarizing is the lack of handholding. In the pre-hospital setting, you are a first responder, meaning you have to do everything you can to stabilize a patient who can possibly be in a potentially life-threatening situation. And what I mean by that is that a lot of these initial interventions are gonna be at your own discretion. And for some people that could be, you know, really exciting because they want to take charge and be their own, you know, medical professional. Whereas for others, they really can't break out of that sort of uh, preconceived notion that nurses are supposed to be secondary to doctors. Let's say if you are responding to a patient with a GSW and you've already controlled the bleeding, you aren't gonna call in an MD and ask for an order for say an NS bolus or nor epi if they do start to hypoperfuse. Instead, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start everything and you're gonna do everything possible to stabilize the patient and adequately move them to a hospital. So again, a lot of this is self-delegation. A lot of this is gonna be using up your own brain power and you know making the best decision at the, in the spot. This is the nurse's time to shine. This is pretty much what all pre-hospital work is supposed to do. EMTs and paramedics are used to the field 
and breaking out as a new grad nurse or someone that is fairly new to nursing field, it, it's a little bit more difficult trying to understand that aspect. Another big step with transitioning over to the pre-hospital setting is also going to be the very limited access to supplies. Now I could only speak from experience, but walking into an ICU hospital's supply room when coming off of working in a private ambulance, especially the IFT division, it was life-changing. Having access to stock supplies and medications was crazy to me just because I was so used to going to work and loading into a Ford uh, E150 ambo van or a Ford Transit as you know the company started making a little bit more money and having access to very basic supplies or in some cases nothing at all. And when talking about flight, I can't imagine having to manage all that while also simultaneously being 10,000 feet up in the air. Now, having to actively manage a patient who has six lines in, uh, is weighing out certain medications to prevent total multi-organ failure is all difficult enough, even in the ICU where you have access to six to eight other nurses, you have MDs, RTs, NPs, PAs, all at your side. But now imagine that when you're in a cramped little environment with only two people, and all of that combined is the hallmark of transport nursing. You're gonna to have to deal with all these interventions while having to actively manage supplies. And in times like that, that really tests your resolve. Let's just say you're in a CCT ambulance and you're dispatched to a house fire where there are six burn victims. After determining who is non-urgent, urgent, emergent, expectant, and deceased, you have to respond in a fashion that not only provides effective patient care, but also adequately manages supplies so you don't accidentally oversupply or undersupply certain patients that do need medical intervention. And with all this combined, it really does go to show that transport nursing does require a very specific type of nurse to get into the field. So you aren't going to just send any new grad or, or say med surge nurse or someone who only knows a specific specialty like peds or maternity, right? Again, I'm not shitting on any specialty, just making a point. So just what are the requirements for becoming a transport nurse? Now, for all three of these jobs, they all require extensive experience in the emergency department or in the critical care setting. And why those two specifically? Well, the reason behind that is because both in the ED and the ICU, you have to deal with a variety of patients that at times do need extensive care and proper stabilization for both the short and long term. Such as how I mentioned the patient with six lines in that was actively towing the line between, you know, multi-organ failure. That was a very real situation that I dealt with in the ICU. And if he wasn't in the ICU and say he was in a med search floor, I would almost guarantee that he would have passed away. In both the ED and the ICU, nurses have to deal with the worst of the worst physiologically, and they learn how to deal with it. And right there, I said physiologically, because when it comes to things such as psychological issues, you do need a very specific type of nurse or a very specific floor to deal with those things, such as how, you know, psych nurses are so good at managing acute, well, both inpatient and outpatient acute psych patients. And not only that, but say peds nurses that deal with child abuse cases and have to go home to their families at the end of the day. It takes very, very strong people to have to do both of those jobs. And like I said earlier, I'm not shitting on anyone. But again, going back into it, ED and ICU nurses have to be the most callous people possible because they have to deal with these things. They have to become very reactive and understand how the body works in order to help stabilize patients and deal with them in both the short and long term, which is why EMTs and paramedics are typically hired as ER techs, because they make such good workers in that immediate setting. So when getting down to each job specifically, MICN is going to be the lowest on the totem pole, followed by CCT, and then flight at the top. So in my county, MICN certified nurses are required to have their RN license, of course, a completion of an MICN training program, a minimum of one year of ED experience, three passing radio or telephone ALS contact evaluations with patients, eight hours of ride along experience with ALS field units, and of course, all the life support certs available, such as BLS, ACLS, PALS, and TNCC, which is Trauma Nurse Corps course. For CCT and flight, it is gonna be a little bit more extensive, but if you're a relatively new nurse in the pre-hospital setting, I'd say go for MICN. It's a great way to get your feet wet and also introduce you to the pre-hospital setting if you haven't already worked as say an EMT or paramedic. And all of this isn't gonna be set in stone as it always varies from company to company. So just keep your eyes open. As for CCT, it is gonna be pretty much the exact same thing as MICN requirements. The only difference is that you are gonna to have to do a minimum of two years combined experience in the ED or ICU CCU. And now this is where we get down to the meat and potatoes. 
The flight nursing requirements is that you have an RN license, three years minimum of ER or ICU-CCU experience, all the life support certs that I mentioned prior, as well as PHTLS, which is the pre-hospital trauma life support, TCRN, which is the uh, trauma certified registered nurse, PHRN, which is pre-hospital RN, CEN, which is the certified emergency nurse, and RP, which is the neonatal resuscitation program, STABLE, which is a neonatal program for managing sugar, temperature, airway, blood pressure, and lab work, or lab work and emotional support, and any other pre-hospital courses that your specific county offers. Not to mention, but some flight programs will specifically hire nurses with their masters and will specifically hire NPs. I also wanted to mention this here. So for flight operations, you are looking at employment with either CalSTAR, Life Flight, Care Flight, Air Ambulance, etc., which are mostly going to be privatized companies that have contracts with either county or private hospitals, such as how Life Flight does have a contract with Stanford Health. And for all these jobs, they are going to be in helicopters or small fixed wing planes, so make sure ahead of time that you don't have any issues with heights or any issues with motion sickness. For both CCT and MICN, you are going to be looking at both privatized companies, uh, unless, you know, your company does decide to get picked up by, say, the county or the city, and then you can get contracts with them. And if you are in the Santa Clara County area like I am and are looking for a CCT job, then I do know that both Falcon and Royal Ambulances are looking for CCT nurses and are actively hiring, so go apply. But this video has been going on for quite some time, so I think it's finally time to end it here. I know I probably missed some things, but if you guys have any pressing questions that you want to ask of me, please leave it in the comment box below where I can respond to it there, or I can make a follow-up video for this. And if you do have any more questions in regards to any other nursing specialty, please also leave it in the comment box below. I'll try to make a video on it as soon as possible. And I am going to leave a bunch of resources in the description box below, so if you have any time and are interested in transport nursing, I suggest you check them out. I'm also going to suggest that all of you do follow at Pyrovixie on Instagram, as I got a lot of my information for this video from her, and she's an awesome flight nurse that started off as a volley firefighter and EMT, who worked her way into the nursing field and is now an amazing flight nurse, so go check her out. But that's going to do it for this week. If you guys like what you saw, please like, comment, subscribe, and make sure to hit that bell. I hope you all have another great rest of your week and continue to stay safe during this time. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Peace.